the normal practice is to always uh, disinfect your workbench here. Yeah? So as you can see, uh, Ponzaima is disinfecting her bench by using Dettol and wiping, wiping it uh, up with uh, uh, tissue. Okay. So once that is done, uh, ensure that your workbench has got all the apparatus that you need. Yeah? A lamp here, a lamp uh, or a Bunsen burner and you need to light it up and this uh, serves as a, a flaming uh, source to flame your steps and to create a sterile uh, area yeah, to work on. So uh, in the beginning you, you will be given a falcon tube, yeah? a falcon tube consisting of Pseudomonas aeruginosa bacterial suspension. So that's the falcon tube with the bacteria, Pseudomonas aeruginosa bacterial suspension. And uh, it has already uh, 10 mil of bacterial suspension in it. Yeah? So you've got to transfer that into the squat bottle. Yeah? Transfer 10 mil of the Pseudomonas aeruginosa bacterial suspension. Yeah? So that's 10 mil. And then next, you transfer 10 mil of uh, uterine broth. Always work around the flame because this is the sterile area. Yeah. So once that's done, mix this. Mix this mix mixture of Pseudomonas aeruginosa and also the nutrient broth. So now you have 20 ml of this suspension in that bottle and leave that uh, for 30 minutes at room temperature. So while it is incubating, prepare your tubes for dilution. So you are to prepare tenfold dilutions here, yeah? starting from 10 to the minus 0, 10 minus 1, 10 minus 2, 10 minus 3, 10 minus 4, 10 minus 5, and 10 minus 6. The diluent for this is nutrient broth. So since this is a tenfold di dilution uh, in each of these tube, what you need to do is to calculate how much of diluent to put in here. Yeah? So which means that you will be transferring 100 microliters into um, tubes minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5 and minus 6 here. Yeah? So which means the new the nutrient broth that you should transfer into the tube would be 900 microliters. So you need to transfer 900 microliters into each of the tube. 900 microliters of neutron broth. Okay, Pon Zaima has already uh, transferred yeah, into the respective tubes 900 microliters of nutrient broth. Okay, so next, what we would do now, uh, since the incubation of the Pseudomonas aeruginosa, um, it has already undergone 30 minutes, so now we would uh, transfer yeah, 1 mil of the Pseudomonas aeruginosa into uh, the first tube and this would be your 10 to the minus 10 to the zero or undiluted tube of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So the first tube would be 10 to the zero which is undiluted. Take one mil of the Pseudomonas aeruginosa bacterial suspension. Okay. Okay. Right. So this is 10 to the power of zero or no dilution. This is a 
full concentrated uh, bacterial suspension. So from 10 to the minus 0, prepare 10 full dilution, prepare 10 minus 1. So transfer 100 microliters from 10 to the power of 0 into the 10 to the minus 1 dilution tube. Mix this tube well using a vortex. So next, you would do a dilution. The next dilution will be 10 minus 2, which means you have to take 100 microliters of this, of 10 minus 1, into the tube labeled as 10 minus 2. Mix this well again using a vortex. Continue this procedure of transferring 100 microliter from 10 minus 2 into the tube labeled 10 minus 3. Mix this and then uh, continue with uh, completing the dilutions of 10 minus 4, 10 minus 5, and 10 minus 6. Yeah? So next, uh, aliquot 1 mil from the mixture of the bacterial suspension from the bottle. Transfer it into an empty uh, Epinov tube. So this is the tube containing uh, 10, to power, 10 to the power of 0 um, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Take 1 mil from the pseudo and Pseudomonas aeruginosa bacterial suspension, transfer it into the uh, tube. So this is 10 to the 0. So from this tube, we would uh, transfer uh, the total volume, which is 1 mil eh, for spreading. But before that, we need to spin here. Yeah? We need to centrifuge each of uh, the dilution that I've already. Um, explain during briefing, you have to centrifuge 10 minus 4, 10 minus 5, 10 minus 6 and a tube of 10 to the power of 0. Centrifuge at full speed for one minute. Centrifuge, centrifuging the tubes for one minute would uh, allow the cells to sediment to the bottom of the tube and thereby um, creating a, pellet, a cell pellet uh, shown here. Yeah? What you need to do with uh, this um, tube containing 10 to the power 0 uh, cells is to remove about 80 to 90 percent of the supernatal. So what uh, Ponzaima is doing is removing about 80 to 90 percent of the supernatal. So this would leave about a hundred microliters, yeah, hundred microliters of the supernatal chemical. So you have about one hundred microliters there and you have the pellet there. So what you do next is you mix the pellet into the uh, remaining supernatal and spread it on yeah, and transfer the whole volume and uh, onto neutron agar plates. Okay, mix, you ensure that the cell pellet is properly homogenized here, that they are uh, truly mixed here, and then uh, remove everything from the tube and 
transfer it onto an A plate. So the colonies that will grow on this NA plate containing 10 to the power of 0 cells, uh, sorry, this is on NA and PCLIN plate, yeah? So this will be transferred onto NA and PCLIN plates. So we move everything. Yeah, this is about 100 microliters. Remember, we have already spun down all the cells from one mill. And now uh, it is being transferred onto uterine agar and pisilin plates. Yeah? So uh, next day, when you come in to, uh, to count the colonies, when they come in to come count the colonies that grow on here, uh, this means that any colony uh, that grows on ampicillin plates would show that they have undergone spontaneous mutation. Yeah? So cells that grow on nutrient agar ampicillin plates will indicate that they have undergone uh, spontaneous mutation. Yeah? Remember, we have not uh, induced, we have not used any uh, mutagens to treat the cells. So which means that any cells that can grow the next day on ampicillin indicates that they are uh, uh, resistant to ampicillin and this, and, and this is the result of spontaneous mutation. Yeah? And uh, before this, we did um, dilutions of um, 10 minus 0 to 10 to the minus 6 here. Yeah? And um, we will spread here. Yeah? One hundred. We, we will do the same. We will repeat what we've done just now, uh, which Juan um, Zayma has shown. She has spun down using a centrifuge. She has spun down the tubes containing 10 minus 4, 10 minus 5, and 10 minus 6. Yeah, yeah. Which means all the cell pellet would have already sedimented to the bottom. Yeah. What we do next is we remove about uh, 80 to 90 percent of the supernatant from each. Of this tube, yeah, from 10 minus 4, 10 minus 5, and 10 minus 6, remove about 80 to 90 percent, leaving only about 100 microliter of the supernatant, and you repeat the same thing, yeah. You then um, mix the cells, the cell pellet, with the remaining supernatant, and then transfer everything onto the plate. Okay, this one, Juan uh, Zaima, um, will is going to demonstrate the transfer of 10 minus 4. Dilution, remove 80 to 90 percent of the supernatant, leaving only about 100 microliters here. Yeah. And then mixing the cells or the cell pellets, mixing it properly using uh, the pipette tip, mixing it properly. And then transfer this onto a nutrient agar plate. Yeah, this one does not have ampicillin. Yeah? So for uh, the inoculation of cells from 10 minus 4, 10 minus 5, and 10 minus 6, they are done on nutrient agar. This is to determine the colony forming unit per ml in the original um, suspension. So the colony forming units that you will uh, observe the next day from 10 minus 4, 10 minus 5, 10 minus 6 um, will indicate the colony forming unit per ml in the original bacterial suspension. Okay. So the colonies that arise from the nutrient agar and ampicillin plate, um, you take the total of the colony forming unit from there and divide it divide it with the total colony forming unit of the bacterial suspension and thereby you will get uh, the frequency of the spontaneous mutation. Next, one Zyma uh, is, is placing the plate here, 
in 237 degrees Celsius and leaving it to incubate overnight. Yeah? So the next day, uh, Juan Zaima will come in to observe the plates, to count how many colonies have grown on the nutrient agar plate and how many colonies have grown on the uh, nutrient agar ampicillin plates. Yeah? So from there, we can calculate uh, how many CFU per ml arising from a spontaneous mutation, divide that uh, to the CFU per ml in the original bacterial suspension and thereby you would calculate your mutation frequency.